Hey, Yo, we're live. what's up, guys? Awesome. How's it going, everybody? You know, I want to check just something before we really get off the rip here. The last time we did this, yeah. we had some audio issues. Oh, yeah, yeah. Folks were saying they couldn't hear us. So as you can see, our boom mics are now uh, much more in our face, cranked yeah. up. So if you guys don't mind in chat, let, let us know. Does this volume sound right to you? A, little, a couple uh, people saying that they, they that it sounds good and all that. Okay. We got a nugget over here. Yeah, somebody spotted nugget over here. We're we'll nugget. Oh, the <laughs> nugget's been messing with that blanket. About knocked it off the, the yeah. couch. Yeah. Oh yeah. It gets yeah. a little rowdy in here. So, uh, my name is Matt. I'm our your your brand strategy lead here at Gun. I'm joined by President and CEO Wes Keltner. Um, some of you might have seen on social what we're planning on doing here, and um, I ju just in case you haven't, just in case you picked up. You know, random guns going live notification, and you popped in. Uh, obviously, we've had a lot of questions come through the community. We try to keep up as best as we can. You know, with with socials, with Reddit, with all of these areas that that we interact with you guys. Um, that being said, some things sometimes you know maybe those those questions are answered more in like a reply, like a one on one thing, and they don't make that you know greater audience of the community. So we felt like. In order for you guys to know where we're at and what we're doing, we needed to just put it out there and say, okay, get your questions in this thread. We'll answer them live. We'll talk a little bit. And hopefully at the end, we'll have some time to go through some live questions that are in the chat. Now, I will say this. Chat is being moderated. We've got a whole team out there. You guys might know Sid, Andy, Raj, and Mel. They're all out there watching, moderating. We got Rob producing over there. Uh, quick shout hey. out to Rob. Well, hey, there he is. Uh, you know, Everybody's kind of uh, all hands on deck working this thing. So, um, and we got Wes there too. Everybody's kind of all hands on deck working this. So, uh, drop your questions in the chat. You know, feel free to drop them now, even though we're going to be answering that Reddit thread first. Feel free to qu ask them now. And Raj, Mel, Andy, Sid, they will get them to us so that if there's time toward the end of the show, we'll address them. That being said, we have a whole thread 400. Yeah, a lot. There was 400, I mean, last I looked, 450-something questions in that mm -hmm. thread. Yep. But we did what we could to combine them and condense them a bit so that hopefully we're hitting all of them. Even if you don't hear your question asked word for word, you should hear an answer that applies. Yeah, that's right. We tried to find all the duplicates that were in all that. You can thank uh, Andy on the team for that and Sid as well. They, they both tackled that and, and went through and found anything that seemed like a duplicate or that's kind of the same thing and combined it into one. So, again... We'll read the questions, and you may find like, oh, that's kind of like what I asked. Uh, that's you know, that was the point of consolidating that. So, uh, you ready to get in, jump into this? Yeah, I was. I was honestly about to say, um, considering that we just talked about how many questions we had, we ought to just yeah, we ought to not waste any time. So, uh, our first question came through over, you know, coming through over the Reddit that we're going to tackle today is, uh, are there long-term plans for the game, i.e., additional family members and victims down the line? Yeah, uh, there are. We have uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of six to nine months worth of content we're planning. That's, you know, maps and new characters and some new kills. There's all kinds of goodies that we've got planned for you guys. Obviously, if there's still a player base and you guys are still buying things, we're going to keep building them. Uh, I mean, that's how this works is every dollar that comes in from content, I put into content and servers. Like That's how we keep the, the, the ship afloat. So... Uh, yes, that's our that's our current our current plan. Uh, you know, if, if you guys don't mind, we're going to kick through these. I know this yep. is going to seem kind of weird and stand. I, again, I, I don't mean to derail our no. our show here, but I know it's going to seem kind of strange for a live stream for us to just start rattling off questions and answers. It's going to look like I'm interviewing Wes for a little bit here, but in order for us to maximize the amount of time and get the most out of this for you guys, that's kind of how we're going to go at it. So. Right away, we're going to keep it rolling with, uh, can we expect to see any events in the future that are a little more involved than a double XP event was? Will we ever see challenges added to the game weekly or daily where players can earn XP or skill points or something like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, the short answer is yes. Um, it's something that we actually wanted in at, at launch as well. And um, the way that we were trying to get it put in there, it, it wasn't coming to fruition the way we wanted it to. Uh, so we had something we had to punt on just to obviously get the game launched was, you know, obviously priority one. Um, but yeah, that's a thing we want to put in. I can't tell you a, a date or when that's going to happen or if that's going to happen, but I know it's a thing we've all discussed, we've all wanted, um, and there's some telemetry and stuff that's already into the game that helps us, at least from some data perspective, to get the ball rolling on those those types of things. So short answer, yes. 
in the name of uh, transparency, I do think it's important to note, you know, a lot of times in this business, you, you, you say, well, this is something we would like to do, but we've got other things to kind of tackle in order to launch this game, in order to get the game out the door to everybody, get it out on time, get it out hopefully in a good spot. Um, and, and, and a lot of you, just being 100% transparent, you know how the game launched, and you know how that went, and you know how that we went into a bit of a short turnaround patch cycle in order to get some things under control and get some things into a place where we wanted to. Now we're moving into that longer patch cycle. Um, part of that is, as we've said before, and we'll probably say a lot throughout this stream, it's shoring things up. It's We've been stacking those rapid patches on top mm. of each other. We need to make sure the foundation is in a generally better spot. So you take a little more time, you harden the build, you do all the big merges and all of that. But part of that is also hopefully so that we can work on starting to integrate some of those things that weren't quite you know there for launch, but we, we knew we wanted to try and tackle. And, Community challenges, I, I, you know, just from my particular expertise and, and where I, I slot in at Gun are obviously very important to me. But I also think you guys can understand and appreciate that. We had things we wanted to get to first, and, and now that we're, we're getting through that, we're, we can look to those things again. Uh, thoughts on allowing for different skill tree presets so we don't have to change the entire skill tree every time when we want to enjoy a different build, as well as a skill tree for every loadout. Well, now, I, mean, I think that one, a lot of that falls on you. You were an integral part of how the perks, you know, put, put together the metagame, the, the whole piece. You you worked hand in hand uh, with Kirby over at Sumo on that. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing with the skill trees that's a little tricky when it comes to this kind of topic is, you know, we we put a lot of effort into making sure that those skill trees are plotted out. You know, each, and, and I'll try to keep this short because we do also have the metagame explained VOD up on the channel. You can check it out on our Twitch. Um, and a lot of this is covered there, but we tried to make sure that we separated, you know, certain perks into different parts of those trees. We decided on which perks would even be available in certain trees. And then we gave everybody kind of like a, a fun random roll spot here and there where they could get ones that are outside of the tree. And that was how we envisioned it pre-launch. Now we know that there's been friction over the random perks. We know there's been friction over, you know, how that respecking and all of that works. So obviously we're listening to the feedback, but... I think that something with creating a, a situation where those trees kind of change is going to be more down the line, maybe with, uh, you know, the rank 99 push up past 99, which we'll talk about. There's a question in here directly related to that. Um, possibly with a push past rank 99, possibly with more content or more metagame unlockables. It's something that we'll, you know, we're, we'll, we'll look into and we'll explore. But as it stands right now, we want to try to make sure that when you're building, you're building with intent and you, you have some things that are cut off to you because, again, there's not really much of a need for a tree if you can just say, well, all of this is mine now, you know, and, and you kind of get to this point where there's no more experimenting or moving around throughout that tree. No risk reward. No, yeah, yeah right. exactly. That being said, you know, we hear the feedback on it and the situation with random perks. We've got a lot of great ideas kicking around as far as when those will come to fruition, probably with some type of extension of that level cap. Uh, will there ever be a roadmap for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and how mm. often can we expect new patches? So, um, no, we won't ever put out a like a public roadmap. We have our own internal stuff that we're hitting, but um, I don't like putting out roadmaps because it means if if something out of our control happens where we miss something, that's a that's a broken promise. Then uh, I don't like doing that. Um, and honestly, we we learned some of that from Friday Thirteenth. You know, we put out some roadmaps. Things went bad. Things that were out of our control, and then um, we we it didn't go well. Um, sentiment of the community turned uh, all because of they kept re referencing a, you know the roadmap, and it was like, hey guys, this you know this is out of our control. But it's hard to explain that to a whole lot of people, so it's easier for us to uh, we know our own things we want to do, and we're targeting those. And as soon as we feel like those are in a strong position, we'll start revealing that information. Uh, to you guys. What was the second part of that, the end of that? The second part was, and how often can we expect new patches? New patches, yeah. Uh, so now that we're out of hotfix mode and back and into like actual legitimately um, uh, the long-term fixes we know we want and new content, things like that, uh, I think you can you can rest assured around every 30 to 45 days we'll be targeting a patch. Uh, sometimes those are all strictly just fixes, uh, and then sometimes you'll see some with new content in them. Uh, but that's our current uh, you know sort of trajectory for new uh, bigger air quote bigger patches as opposed to the hot fixes you guys were seeing like basically weekly cadence 
Uh, next question would be: Are there any plans to bring crossplay to eighth gen consoles? This is this is a good one. I mean, at this time, no. Um, technically, it's it's quite difficult to do uh, a major time sink. Um, every time we've lifted the hood and looked at it, it it's it's far more intricate than it might seem. Um, I'm not saying it no forever. It's not going to happen. But right now, it would eat up so much of our time of the things that we know we want to do that we're concentrating on, on new content and you know, fixing some things that are there, getting some quality of life stuff done that we know we want. Um, and that one's a, it's just a bigger nut to crack. And it, it, again, it's not a definitive no, but right now, it, it's not on the docket. Uh, I just want to say, I, let, me, let me qualify something real quick because I said this is a good one. I know that some of you are going to be a little let down by that answer, but I think that it's important for us. The, the goal of this stream and the goal of what we're doing here is to try to get these answers out there to as many people as possible. We try to talk about these things in conversations, but you know how that goes. Those are pockets. And I think that there's a lot of people who maybe were holding out some kind of hope that that was coming or that was something that was coming down the line. I've also seen some people reach out to us and say that crossplay isn't working because they're on one of those 8th gen consoles. So again, for the sake of us having these conver this kind of a conversation with you guys, I think that there's a lot in here that even if you don't want, you know, the answer is not necessarily something that you wanted to hear. I think that this is good because we're, we're hopefully getting a lot of these things cleared up so we can have a lot less of those misunderstandings. Uh, are you going to add more levels further than 99 and add in-game currencies? There's, this is a long one. This is a long one. There's a bit of extra. <clears throat> yeah. So let's, let's pick this one apart. Are you going to add levels further than 99 and add in-game currencies? metagame and a prestige system. Uh, are we raising the level from 99? Yes, um, that is happening. I, I, I can't give you a date when it's happening, but yeah, it's been an ongoing discussion here. Uh, nearly every other day it comes up uh, in design meetings where we're discussing how we want to do that. Um, the second part of that was about will there be currencies for earning. It's also been an ongoing discussion here. It's a thing that um, we think is a smart move. Uh, it gives people something to grind towards um, and it gives them obviously also an option to if you don't want to if you can't afford or you don't want to buy the content that we're putting out is there an alternate way that you could get to it yes and I think that's fair and we're we want to we want to work towards that again I can't I don't have a date in front of me because it's we literally came out of hot fix mode which is just you know putting out as many fires as, <laughs> as we can as fast as we can and then it was you know rolling into this biggest patch because we had to merge all those splintered builds into one main build uh, which is what this next big quality of life patch is going to do. So that that gives us a far more of a wider vision to allow us to, to look down the road and say, that's a thing, and we can get this in this time. Uh, let's figure that out. So the short answer on it, will there be currency in the game? We want it. Uh, we think it's a smart play. I can't give you a date as to when. Um, there's much more to this question. I oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the things I wanted to note, though, that's kind of tied to that, and, and if you're you've been here since the Friday the 13th days, you know that when we went through the – extension of the levels in Friday the 13th. We've said this a few times on streams. I have like deja vu of us two sitting here talking about it. Mm. Um, we don't want to just extend the level cap just to be like, now there's more numbers to earn for numbers sake. That's weird. We want to make sure that there's something there that you're working toward that you're earning. And so I think that a lot of that, the particulars of that question, that's they, they kind of slot into that. Our metagame is built in a way where it's somewhat modular and the trees can expand and all of that, but there needs to be something there for you to get to. And, and without that, it's just players earning a higher number. So, yeah, all of those things are kind of tied together, which makes it a little trickier. But by the same note, those discussions are happening, and it, it, it's something we hear you guys loud and clear on. The, the simplest way to get to the next part of that question is, are you going to add something to earn in the base game and give players an incentive to play? Mm -hmm. Now, that would be, I, I take that, and I hope I'm not misinterpreting the question, I take that as the base game like sub-99. Just in general, will that currency work its way back down that way? Right. Or are there things that are like, if the level goes up, yeah. are there things that are going to appear in that that right. I can Cosmetics, unlock? Cosmetics, so uh, on, yeah. And yeah, and the answer to that is yes as well. That's something that we are uh, we want to do as well because that it kind of makes sense that if there's things that you can buy and things that you can earn, uh, I, I mean, yeah, we, that should be in the game. Next up, will you add more achievements and trophies? I'm going to let you tackle that one. Well, you know, here's the thing about adding achievements and trophies. There's a group of people who, you know, uh, achievement hunters and things, and even just 
non-achievement hunter folks who are just like, yeah, cool, that's another thing to, to work toward. There's a group of people who are like, hey, don't mess with my, you know, platinum trophy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but again, I think it ties into that concept of we don't want to add things just to be like, we did that, and now there's more things. So where they make sense, uh, would we consider it? You know, I'm sure that we would consider it. I think what we want to hear from you guys is how you guys feel about it, because I'll be honest, um, aside from this question and maybe a few off the, the, the cuff comments, I haven't really heard too much either way. I would have to check in with uh, Sid and Andy out there on, on, on the community side a little mm. more about that. But I think that if there's enough of a want for more achievements and if we hear enough about that, obviously we'll, we'll humor that idea. It's just a matter of, you know, we don't want to necessarily, you don't want to aggravate either side of that argument. And, and, um, but I think that, you know, if there's something there that worth working toward, we can always talk about that and figure that out down the line. So let us know. Continue talking to us on Reddit and you know, socials and everywhere else on those things. Uh, let's get in here. Oh, this is, an, this is a good, this is a good, good one. Is there anything the players have done that has surprised you? I mean, I think any person that's done game design, uh, there's many, many moments where you're like, they're doing what? Um, so the, the odd thing is you always, when you sit and design the game, you always then say to yourself, yeah, but people are going to play this like faster than what, you've designed it to do and you and you know that in your head but then when you see it in the live you're like that's like double what I thought they were going to play in terms of speed because um, you spend the time that we spend on making the, the levels feel as immersive as we can and and leaning into stealth as a mechanic to use and uh, and it just how all the systems sort of all play into the the pace of what we the way we designed it and then you know, and the player base plays that at like 2x, and you're like, oh, slow down, slow down. Um, so that's, for me, was probably a, a pretty big su surprise. Um, and the other side, which I know everyone in chat would probably go, why were you surprised by that? It's, I guess it's because the internet always, you just kind of roll your eyes, but um, a lot of horny people mm -hmm. out there in the world. The horniness is off the charts. It's yeah. at a 10 out of 10 for stuff in the game, and I'm like, what? You know? <laughs> I second everything that you said, but I also have to call out the toilet flush meta. Oh, I forgot about that. I, I, that surprised the crap out of me because oh, there yeah. were wait, uh, because there were there were times where I was just like, you know, you know that the when you're building the game, you think about it in terms of people are going to flush this toilet to make a noise so that then they can evade the family, but the the concept of somebody knowing the family's in the next room flushing the toilet, mm. and like then going and hiding in the corner or going a loop de loop and then flushing it again and being able to, I mean. Not just use it to distract them, but use it to keep them in that area with them while their buddies mm. escape. And I mean, yeah, the toilet flush thing definitely uh, uh, was a shocker for me. And yeah. and and marathons of stabbing grandpa. I, I know that in pre-launch, I would go stab grandpa, and I felt like our our uh, colleagues out there or over at Sumo would be on me immediately as family if I stabbed them. It was within seconds. I had all three of them at me, but. Um, the stab grandpa meta definitely surprised me. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Will there be a possible way to make Leatherface not mandatory? Mm. And do you guys have any ideas, plans, or incentives to get more people to play Leatherface? I still run into lobbies with people refusing to play him. Okay. So the first part of that question was, will there be a way to make Leatherface not mandatory? Yeah. Yes. And that's coming by the end of the month. So you will not have to play... You will no longer need Leatherface to start a match. Um, ways to make him more fun, is that what they said? Yeah, before we roll into that, mm. I want to touch on something, and I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, but I think it's important that we note, um, you know, Leatherface is, a, Leatherface is an important part of every match. Now, I think that some of you are going to go, oh, all right, Leatherface is not mandatory, and hop right in there and play with without Leatherface and start realizing why maybe Leatherface was a little bit mandatory to start with. Mm. There's going to be growing pains with this, guys. I'm not saying this to be any kind of way. There's going to be growing pains. So get ready. When you see no Leatherface, just know that match is going to run a little different. You're missing a significant part of that match. Um, that being said, we want to hear all of your feedback once that hits because I think that's going to be a really interesting time for the yeah, game. I agree. Having, having that, that force not present in every match, I think that there's, um, and again, I don't mean this insulting, but I think that there's a bit of take him for granted happening. Mm. And when you go and extract him from it, I think people are going to go, oh, wait, I, I get that. it now. Yeah, yeah I, I need that. that. Yeah, for so. sure. 
But anyway, I digress. Or maybe not. Maybe yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the the greatest decision, and everyone's like, no, it's great because there's a new formula of like yeah. you need. Oh, if you have you know sissy Johnny Cook, it's oh it's awesome. You know, like yep. that kind of of mentality could actually prove to really changing up how the game plays. So it's a it's an interesting experiment. Yep. That obviously off the rip is about like getting server game flow moving faster. Um, I think it will help with that, but uh, I think there's some some tack on that could go either way here that you guys could, again, like Matt was alluding to, realize, oof, we really need him. Or um, this new formula of changing things up could actually um, make the game feel different. So we'll, we'll definitely see a couple new builds, like or not build, but match synergies with different compositions because, like you said, just being able to have – I mean, I think about Hitchhiker, Sissy, and Cook. Having someone listening and then two people being able to scurry around mm -hmm. and get right to him. I mean, there's going to be some deadly combos. That's that rat so. squad, boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's going to be some combos there that, like, maybe we didn't even see. Again, the previous question about things that surprised us that we didn't see coming. So I think that it's worth noting that's going to be a very important time for you guys to engage with us and engage with our community team and um, make sure that you're talking and, and, and keeping the, that communication open because there's going to be a lot of fun stuff there this week. Uh, the second part of that was incentives to get more people to play Leatherface. Uh, I don't know if we're looking at like a player incentive as in a reward necessarily, but we are, you know, always fine tuning uh, all the family members and, and turning knobs and whatnot to get them to a place that we feel like that's the, the intended way they're supposed to feel. Um, so I think you can expect to see um, Leatherface Potentially getting, I think we've already made some adjustments mm -hmm. to, and, and even maybe in the next patch, mm -hmm. um, about him feeling a little more beefy. Um, so I, I want to come back to that question when you see what gameplay is without him. Um, if you're starting to play a bunch of matches and there is no leather face, what are your thoughts then? Do you want him, do you want him, not only do you want him back, do you want him back and be even more deadly? Um, do you want him back and he should be trimmed back a little? You know, these are all the discussions that we all have as, a, as you as the community and us as the, as the team. Yeah, and I, I think it's important to note that as much as, even though we're removing the, the requirement for him, ultimately the goal is to have people fighting over picking him, mm. I mean, you know, wanting to be, be him. And so it's something that, but again, like, like Wes said, it's, it's a field of knobs that we're going to continue turning and seeing yeah. how things go. And a, a vital part of that is the community you know, coming back to us and having those conversations. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Is there any chance an in-game friends list could be added for cross-play players? Mm. This yeah, this one's one. a. I mean, the short answer is no, uh, and I know that's a, a, probably blunt and terse for you guys, but that would mean we have to build an account system. Um, that's just the way that cross-play works. Uh, the fact that that the players from different platforms can play together. The only way to be able to then create a friend list is to have our own account system. It's why, you know, like a PlayStation player can't, like, friend list into Microsoft's ecosphere and the Xbox. Like, you just can't do that. Um, you have to create a uniform account system. So you'd have to sign in with a username, password, that kind of thing. Um, and I, know, I don't like that when I play a game. Um, and it's also a costly endeavor to build that whole system. That's a year plus just to build that system. And then there's a lot of security has to go in to make sure that, like, your data, your information isn't, you know, leaked or something that happens. The, there is some off the sh like off the shelf things you can use, but the most commonly one that's used is the Epic uh, Game Store one, um, and not everyone loves that either. So there's just not a good solution to be able to do that today. I think as more games move into crossplay, that it's going to become more cost effective and maybe some more off the shelf solutions. To do that but right now it requires you would have to when you boot the game up you would have to, it would hit you with the create a username and password um i hate that yeah yeah there's also a, a, a lot of information that has to be handled of theirs and and you know new account I, there's there's friction anytime a player has to create a new account oh yeah you know what i mean so there's oh, yeah. there's a, there's layers to that one but like uh, wes wes ran that one through pretty thoroughly uh Next question, do any devs secretly play the game undercover? And if so, <laughs> how can we identify them or telltale signs? <laughs> this is such a weird question. This is like that. <laughs> well, no. That person not. in the window. It's like, not, yeah. where's that developer at? Right. But know? I mean, there's also like, 
like not weird people that yeah, are just well, like, yeah, right. oh man, it'd be cool to play with the devs. Now, yeah. once we you know get to a spot where we can turn this stream on and we do jump in and play, and you guys can queue up and we play together, like all day we should be yeah. doing that, yeah. right? Because I, I, I kind of want to run through a handful of these you jokers out there, but. I don't. I'm not going to speak for everyone at Gun and say, "Yeah, here's all their handles," because <laughs> a lot of them still go home and turn on the game and play as just a way to chill out and just kind of decompress from the day. And they don't necessarily want people being weird, like, "Oh my God, it's a dev!" Like I saw it all the time in Friday. If I jumped into Friday and just so happened to be Jason, people would come up and like stand in front of me and be like, "Kill me, kill me! I want to be killed by a dev." And I'm like, "Just let's play the game, guy. Let's play." Yeah. And they're like, "No, no, no," you know. And so. I'm not saying that everyone, everyone's weird, but there's some weird people that start to act differently, and it changes game. They, like it changes the flow of the game when they know that. Some people get too try hard, and some people just like they want to come like teabag you, or they want to do whatever they. You, know, you guys know, like none of this is foreign. The things I'm saying to you, um, but if anyone ever here wants to, like, there's obviously we have discords, and we're all on social, and if if any of those want to give that information up, like, obviously they they. They can tell you, and they can hook up, they can play. But if you want to play with us as a community, like rest assured, there'll be some streams coming up soon yeah. where we all jump in together and uh, and y'all can kill me. We plan to bring back uh, Beyond and Tales from the Stream once we get to that point where you know there's time to set up and, and get going on these things too. Um, one thing I did want to mention though was you know for the mo a month or two after launch, I was still playing under Matt Shacha on on Xbox. And dox, you just dox yourself. Yeah, I, I would be on <laughs> I would be in the lobby and straight up somebody in the, the text chat would be like, oh, oh, the Connie is a dev. And then it was like, oh, you know, the Leatherface player would be like, oh, right on, all right. And immediately the match would start and it felt like Leatherface was on a magnet to my ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I don't want to do that anymore. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I might be playing under a a, a, a Smurf account now. There you go. But, you know. There you go. Uh, okay, next question. I don't have a Smurf account, I was kidding. I know we have pedals, but could we possibly see a single-player mode added to the game like Virtual Cabin from F13? Um, yes. Uh, it's in the works. Uh, it's been in the works for a while. It's not done yet. Um, I don't know when it's going to be done, but as soon as we do know, we'll let you know. Um, I have, I've had a lot of questions about that because I know a lot of people enjoy the Virtual Cabin. We enjoyed making it. Uh, we enjoyed all the the deep cuts and the and the lore because we know there's horror nerds like us out there that want that kind of thing. Um, and we're working with the same team that built the virtual cabin to build um, what we are internally dubbing museum mode. So you can take that and probably start to get a picture of what that might be. Very cool. That's what it's going to be. Very cool. Uh, next question is, Will you reduce the prices of new characters? Man, right from like a fun one to a... <laughs> will you reduce the prices of new characters? I got to talk to Andy about how he structured this. <laughs> um, will you reduce the uh, prices of new characters given some of the negative feedback? Do you agree with some player's sentiment that the new characters are pay to win? Uh, well, I, 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 I'll probably ahead. hop right sure. in, into this one. Um, you know, here's the thing about the negative feedback. Uh, yeah, we understand where you're coming from. And honestly, when it comes to pricing... To an extent, you're always going to hit some friction with when you release those things. We knew that when we put the, the pricing list out, there was going to be people who were like, oh, that's a little less than I expected. There's going to be people who were like, that's more than I expected. And then somewhere in the middle was where it was going to lay out. But when it comes to making those decisions, we have to look at what we put into those characters. This is a creative process. And anytime, any creative process, you have to assign what you, you, know, you think the value of that creative output is. And we did so... It, you know, it like, not lightly. We basically, we didn't sit here and just go, ah, let's see if we can get away with that. We, we assigned a price to these things that we felt was worth it for the creative work that went into them. The mocap, the VO, the, the design, all the lore, all the character backstory, all the things, animations, kills, all, all of the things that go into making a character. Okay, well, what does that all cost? And what, you know, what, what amount do we feel is fair to ask for that? And mm. those are the numbers we landed on. Now, that being said, um, we appreciate the feedback on it. We hear you loud and clear. There's, there's obviously the future is full of things like sales and bundles and whatever. And can earnable happen. content. Yeah, exactly. And earnable content down the line. But what it really comes down to is as far as just straight up, flat out saying we're changing the price, 
um, I feel that we put a lot of thought into those prices and we put a lot, we did our due diligence on them and, and those are the prices. Yeah. Um, you know, we feel that's what those creative outputs are worth. Whether or not you'll see a bundle or a sale or a whatever, I mean, sure. But um, yeah, that's what we feel those are worth. And as far as, do, uh, do you agree with some player sentiment that the new characters are pay to win? I would caution anybody who's buying a piece of DLC because they think it gives them a competitive advantage. I would caution them against that. And, and I know that's sometimes tough to hear. But that's because we don't put them out and, and try to, you know, um, um, attract buyers for those pieces of content by making them stronger. So if anything, right. if it's outside of what we feel the vision for that character or piece of content or whatever it is, mm. if it's outside of those parameters, we're going to change that. We're going to patch the game. We're going to modify that and bring it back into... We use the term balance a lot. Texas has its own balance. Texas is not balanced as in two scales meeting in the middle. It's balanced in the way that we feel the game should play, um, how strong the family should be, how strong the victim should be. So mm. we release a piece of outlier content, and we are going to be looking to bring those back to that balance that we have for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So therefore, if you're purchasing, purchasing a piece of content because you think that gives you a competitive advantage... I wouldn't make that be the only reason I purchased a piece of content because we will be promptly bringing that back into what we consider the balance of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's right. So I hope that all I hope that that's as clean an answer as you can get there. Uh, will the game get more mechanics added? There. Oh, I, I see what they're doing there. Uh, there are a ton of cool mocap animations in your mm. PTS video, from Grandpa Execution to Cook Scolding animation. Why were things cut in 2021 motion capture? Yeah. So. Uh, in video games, a lot of stuff gets gets cut. Um, you you have dreams, and you have uh, even the time and the money that you put into things that you want in the game. And then, as the deadline is approaching, uh, you got to start cutting things. Every game in the world goes through this. It's a very painful uh, moment for all the creatives on the team because you've invested an, an, an enormous amount of time and creativity and money into uh, this thing that you wanted and then there's not enough time to put it in there. And if you, in continuing to like delay a launch to get those pieces in also isn't a smart, usually not a smart play, uh, unless something's just woefully broken and then obviously a delay is smart. But when you're just missing things that you know you wanted, that, that they don't necessarily change the game or fix a thing that's broken, like you, you don't hold up progress for that. So yeah, if you've seen in the BTS, the behind the scenes videos, that there is uh, motion capture where there are things occurring in the motion capture that you do not see in the game, it's because those things were cut. Does that mean you'll never see them again? Not exactly. Uh, you may see them in some fashion. Um, it's not something we want to completely abandon and just throw in the garbage, but there's a difference between capturing the data, which is what you're doing at mocap, and then connecting that data into the game, into the rig, et cetera, there's still a, a whole lot of work that would need to, to happen to, to bring those things to life. So I guess it's maybe is kind of the loose answer I give you, which I know you guys probably would rather have a yes or no, but uh, yeah, maybe. And here's the thing, that all that stuff is cool to see. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, love, I love the idea of... I love that we can keep that in that video and, and show people, hey, look, this is you know part of that process. I, in my mind, a true behind the scenes is this is everything that happens. And, and yeah. that does happen. You shoot a lot of things that you get back and you go, that's not really going to work or that's not going to make the cut. Or, oh, sure. You know, Just like films things. have deleted scenes and yeah. when, you rent, you know, when you buy the Blu-ray, you get to watch all the yep. stuff that didn't did make the cutting floor. Uh, I mean, games, that's games. Every game uh, gets that stuff. And sometimes they can work it back in and sometimes it does have to be completely abandoned because the game has transformed over the, the years that it's been out that it's no longer it doesn't even fit anymore like it wouldn't make sense you'd have to shoehorn it in to make it work and it, it just doesn't vibe with like what the game is at that point because you're, you're building a game and you have a singular vision and you launch the game and some parts of that vision change because you touched it because players played it and it and it, it, so it can change a little you still keep the clear vision of what it is but there's parts of it that become malleable and, and, and adjust and change and shift so it, you can't always just go back and get that thing and say, and this just this little Lego yeah. piece just fits in perfectly now. Like, no, it, do, it doesn't anymore. But, yeah. Next question. Will we ever get skill-based matchmaking? No. Uh, that's a short <laughs> answer. Uh, Skill-based skill matchmaking is usually something you find in competitive-based games. 
Gun does not make competitive games. Gun makes cinematic horror experiences. We try to immerse you in the world of a film to make it feel like you were in a film. I've said it six ways to Sunday. Is when you're with your friends and you finish watching a horror movie, the credits roll, you look at each other and you say, what would you have done? We make games that answer that. And that's the whole point of it. It's fun with your friends. You get to put your money where your mouth is. Would you have ran? Would you have fought? What would you have done? We try to build games with tools and mechanics and systems that allow you to answer that. What we don't do is make a game that, for people to get sweaty in and get toxic and yell at each other. And skill-based skill based matchmaking can be a, a road towards that. Now, does that mean forever, never in the future, you're never, we're never going to have that? If the game is getting long in the tooth and we're, we're starting to see a bifurcated audience and there's, we, and there's a need for that, it's a thing we would discuss and look at. But right now, the game doesn't need it. You guys plan on adding more family cosmetics? Uh, yeah, um, we are, and I think you're going to see some potentially in the next like, I don't know, sixty days, give or take. Um, I'd like to say end of year. It may spill into the first, but it's right in that that window. That yeah, you're going to get that. And next, oh, this this is a good one, just because they left a they left a statement at the end of it. When can we finally expect more news about the newest killer map and survivor? Love you guys. We love oh, you too. Uh, nice. This is a, you mind if I tackle this Please, one? Please knock it out. Newest killer map and sur and survivor. I don't know killers and survivors. I think we're talking about family and victims, but yeah, um, yeah. So newest family and victim member and map. Uh, yeah, we're gonna be talking about those more over the course of the next two weeks, mm -hmm. and I get to share some good news for once, and you'll be seeing them and playing as them by the end of the month. Ooh. Bang. That's big time. Let's go. Let's go. Big time. Uh, okay. What was the process like creating new characters to put in the family, Sissy and mm. Johnny? And did you guys consider lore from the original movie when trying to create these characters and their story? I'll lead off, but I want you to fill sure. in here because you, you actually had a lot more firsthand on this, but... Um, you guys know the name Kim Hinkle. Um, he's the rights holder, uh, also the writer of the first film, and uh, sort of acted as a co-director co next to Toby Hooper. Uh, obviously, Toby's not with us anymore, so we're not able to, to pick Toby's brain much, but we, we uh, luckily can still work with, with Kim on all facets of the game, and that includes creating new, new characters. Uh, and so every, of the, every character you see in the game, has Ronnie, our creative director, has sat down with Kim and, and exhaustedly gone over every detail of bios and backgrounds and where are they from and what's their freaking star sign it's like it, it, it's it's uh it's pretty wild how deep they got with this but you got some firsthand a bit of firsthand knowledge of hanging out yeah. directly with kim during this process yeah it was um one of the photogrammetry trips that we took to texas and um you know we went and had a barbecue with the original screenwriter of the texas chainsaw massacre which blew my mind at the time um but yeah, you know, Kim has this Bible for characters and, you know, some of which are the characters that you guys all know from the 1974 film. Some of them are characters that didn't really make it into that or any of the subsequent films. Um, you know, in our Making the, a Massacre documentary, Ronnie talks about having these snippets of, of characters that I guess Kim had been starting to put together but never really fully fleshed out once they weren't going to be part of one of those other projects. Mm -hmm. And so that was where those nuggets came from. And then seeing Ronnie and Rob and Kim just kind of attack those little nuggets and stretch them out into what they've become. That's the really uh, interesting part to it. Um, Johnny and Sissy are both some of the coolest additions to anything Texas I agree. Chainsaw. Yeah. And, I mean, that's just a direct result of, number one, like you said, having Kim involved, being mm. able to have Kim and that original Bible of characters involved, and then you know, Ronnie and Rob's approach to, to what they do with those characters. I just think it's it's wild. And I also would give a bit of, like, I give a lot of accolade, actually, to the whole group that represents yeah. the Texas license to give us the creative freedom to do that. Um, granted, we were working, you know, with Kim through that, but there were still a lot of strides and a lot of things that were done that, you know, solely came out of the, you know, the creative brains here at Gun, and then, like, passed over to Kim and the team, and they're like, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, so that was very, like, validating for the whole team that we're at the right spot. We're, we're, we're all sitting at the table equally here making something that's truly unforgettable. Um, that's pretty cool. And it was also a cool side note to see some of you people uh, dress up as those oh, characters yeah. for Halloween. I saw I had a lot of people tag me on Twitter and Instagram. 
Uh, we were at Scarefest, which is a local horror convention here in Lexington. Saw some folks there dressed as Johnny. Um, this, it was just, it's cool that this, you know, s- started with a conversation and, you know, literally people scribbling on paper and going back and forth with Kim and, and trying to land on this. And then, and now suddenly it's like, it's tangible. There's a person walking around yeah. as that. It's, it's pretty rad. Every time I see a, a cosplay of one of our victims who are all original or uh, Johnny or Sissy, don't get me wrong. I love Hitchhiker, Cook, yeah. Leatherface cosplay. I think it's cool. Um, seeing Johnny and Sissy is just so weird. Seeing yeah, them as cosplay. because it's definitively like that's the game. That and, is yeah. that canon. That that it's part of the Texas canon, but straight from the game. And seeing yeah. it like you said in the in the real world uh, blows my mind. So shout out to everybody putting together great cry. Oh, and check out our cosplay guide. We have a whole cosplay guide. You could you can be Johnny or Sissy or a very you know. in depth thanks to to Tanner. Yeah, uh, spent many months uh, creating this full guide to show you like the exact clothing the fabric it's got close-ups of the swatches like the whole works uh and where can they find this cosplay guide man on the community hub hey www.txchainsawgame.com slash hub we'll take you there and uh yeah check it out it's it's pretty rad um questions because we still got a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a whole buttload are there any plans to bring leatherface's mallet sledgehammer into the game any chances more environmental executions like leatherface's gallows mm-hmm so yeah, we we did um, have some early discussions, and I think there may even be some brief some brief mocap of Leatherface using a mallet. Um, it, it, the the difficult part was we didn't like that uh, like Leatherface exchanging weapons and things. It would be odd. Like why, what would he do with a chainsaw? Like he's not going to stick it on his back. Like he's you know Ash from Evil Dead or yeah. something. Like it didn't it didn't match. If he set it down and then pulled out a mallet, it's like then how do you get the la- chainsaw back? You have to walk back over and pick it up and. And, and players would, in some instances, would like, oh, where did I, where did I lay the chainsaw? Or, you know, something weird happens where there's a high ping and the, the chainsaw disappears into the earth. You've seen weird stuff happen in games. So that felt like we were just asking for some troubles like that to happen. Now, does that mean you're never going to see that? Eh, you might see something in the, in the future that is uh, affiliated with that weapon. But more on that uh, in the future. The second part of that question was about, um, I think, sort of contextual kills or executions. Yeah, environmentals and Correct. things like that. Because obviously, uh, you can Leatherface can take someone to the gallows. Um, yeah, we've got plans for some other things. We don't have all those all totally ironed out yet. Uh, it is on our wish list, and that's what's good about being moving out of hot picks and into a normal patch cadence. Is we finally get to go, ah, take a breath and go. All right, wish list time. The stuff that didn't make it, the stuff we always wanted to do, the stuff that was only you know sort of half done and we had to stop because of whatever reasons we get to come back and look at those things so uh i think you can expect that in the future but i I can't give you a date as to when but we are getting back to the mocap studio pretty soon yo uh let's see here we we, these are kind of related so we're gonna yeah condense a couple questions was it planned for other family members to have their own environmental similar uh, to the gallows yeah. and will there be an option in the future to select multiple executions for family or like tag team executions sure sure since these are all execution related. yeah I, I mean I, I know that the conversation we've been having were more universal um, contextual so like anyone could potentially use as long as it wasn't something that you needed to carry someone to because it doesn't make sense that maybe some of us smaller family members can't necessarily carry someone um, but so we're, we're discussing like those pieces. So more info on that whenever we get something that's more concrete of what we want it to, to be. I think tag team executions are amazing and it would be super cool to have in the game. We don't have plans for it. Uh, but I know it, it, uh, really early on, it was a discussion that, that I think Ronnie and Rob may have, have had. I was pulled in on some of those meetings. We're talking about like how to pull that off. And then there's also a mountain of bugs that can come from it. Uh, but Either way, it would be cool right now. It's not on the docket, but it's not because we don't think it's not like a super rad idea because we do. But uh, there's some other things we want to get done first. Does that answer all those? I think so, yeah. Okay. Are you considering a character selection queue? Oh, th- I'm sorry. Before we move on, there was one part of that question that we didn't get, which is multiple executions uh, equipped oh, yeah. for the same character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I do think that's a, um, a thing we've been discussing internally, um, g- but we need more of them, um, which is also why we're uh, booking some time in mocap. There's a lot of things we know we want on our wish list to get done. Uh, so being able to equip some, yeah, that's a thing that we are discussing as well. Again, I don't want to throw, start throwing out dates of when you can expect that because it's still pretty early for us in, yeah. 
and we've got some things already that we're that we're planning uh, sooner rather than later. So, uh, yeah, that's. Yeah. It's, it, I don't mean to give you a non-answer. It sort of is, but isn't. Um, One thing I will say is um, more executions is always a good thing, but, you know, it's important to note that that comes with a certain, you know, there's mocap, there's, yeah. you know, then get the mocap in, do the animations. It's sure. not, it's, even when you leave the mocap volume, it's not like, well, now that we recorded yeah. that, plug it in the you're game. A th you're a third of the way done right, at that right. point. Yeah. So there's there's a bit to that. But that being said, it falls under the category of, of like we've said numerous times, there's a want, obviously. Yep. You're talking to us about those wants, and we'll keep trying to make sure that we tackle as many as we can. For sure. Are you considering a character selection queue before loading into a lobby so we have a better chance of playing the character we want to play? Mm. In all mind, I can jump in on yeah, this Yeah, please one a do. Bit. Yeah. Um, you know, here's the thing with something like that. That splinters off that player base, and you start to create issues where, you know, match times get longer, things like that. We, we recognize that people want to be able to play the character they want to play. I mean, uh, that, that's obvious human nature. I, I pick that person. I want to be that person. We also get that it, you know, and, and we think that the community understands as well that our game is kind of built in a way where single pick characters have to be a thing. I mean, imagine four Leland's or four Connie's or four Anna's, you know, what that would look like for you. Um, so single pick characters kind of have to be a thing. Um, in terms of, of a character selection queue, right off of the bat, you're saying if there's a character that's maybe a bit popular, now each of them are going off into their own independent lobbies if they're all in the same kind of meeting the same kind of matchmaking criteria. They're all off now on their own independent lobbies as opposed to being grouped together and that match potentially starting right at that moment. You've now got five lobbies that are all waiting to yeah, fill. Right. Um, so that's the kind of split of the player base that I talk about. Um, that being said, I think that as we you know roll out more characters and do cool shit like we have you know some stuff coming up by the end of the month, um, you're going to start seeing less of an issue of that as people have more and more multiple, mm -hmm. you know, uh, options at their disposal. So sure. that being said, it, it really, um, we think that there's other, uh, I would say, more elegant or more um, uh, detailed ways to kind of combat those kind of pain points rather than saying, well, here, select Connie and then go sit in the lobby just as you because everyone's trying in your region or whatnot is trying to select Connie. Um, rather than having that match time be a be a new pain point trying to solve some other one. Right. So, yep. uh, are there any plans for a better in-game report system to report abusive players? Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, I mean, it's always something that we want to strive to give you better tools to do that. Uh, yeah, it's on the docket. Yeah. I, I think that one of the things about reporting players that's important to note is... Um, and this goes for Gun and probably any game studio under the sun. It's something that you're always watching for opportunities to improve. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's never a moment where you're like, yep, that's not a problem anymore. And, you know, that's just the nature of it. You, you have people coming together. You have to make sure that if something happens, that there's there's something at their disposal to, you know, report it, make it known, you know, whatnot. It's something you're always going to want to improve. Will we get more voice lines for existing characters going forward and possibly more lore drops? Uh, yep, um, because there are um, plans in the future for, you know, more characters, and what makes our game, one of the things that makes our game unique are the interactions, the vocal voice lines that are unique to when two people come together. Um, we, we are always striving, again, to make a cinematic experience in a multiplayer setting. And that's one of the pillars that we think helps with that. So, yeah. Uh, in terms of lore, yeah, you're always going to find lore in maps. And there are new maps. There's the museum mode coming. You're going to find some in there. So, uh, yeah, you're always going to be able to find that kind of stuff. And obviously checking out our the hub that we have where we put a lot of backstory on characters and stuff there. Uh, as we announce new characters, we usually back up on, get on the hub and start describing some more background and bios and stuff about them absolutely and you know briefly ronnie puts a lot of work ronnie yeah. and rob they, you know, lot everybody here at gun there's a lot of work that goes into not just creating these characters as in okay well how do they play what are their abilities it's i mean like wes mentioned earlier their star sign their personality what their hometown where they come from what makes them who they are and why that's their ability yeah we even talk about what kind of music they would listen to yeah like what yeah. how would they dress because it, it obviously you gotta you gotta pick out their clothes and stuff for them yeah, I mean, it's it's an exhaustive discussion about one singular person. Absolutely. Until we're, like, sick of talking about 
Yeah, and, and, and person. you know it, that that's what makes them more than just a character in a video game. They're whole people. Um, yep. And so yeah, we like to try to make do. Uh, those of you who have been here since the beginning have seen. We like to do some creative things with that, and so keep an eye on the hub. Um, again, you know, you know, we have a couple of things coming up, and each one of those is its own lore hit. So, yep. Does West mind elaborating on the process of acquiring interactive rights to licenses, likenesses, etc.? Since Gunn has the license of the first film, is there any hope for the legacy characters like Sally and Pam? Uh, also, will the game stay in the '70s overall, or will it? Will the narrative move forward over the game's lifespan? That's a lot of questions in one. It, yeah, this is. Uh, this was. I mean, it would take a whole stream for me to get into the details of like, how do you acquire interactive licenses? Because it's it, it it's um it's a lot to discuss, and I've done that in some of my own personal streams. I've mentioned on Twitter a time or two about how that works. I've gone on podcasts and talked about that. Um, it it, it would take too long to to go through the minutia of that. But do we want? I think what here's what I think this person is is trying to get to, and maybe some of you out there as, as well. Does Gun want? the other films in the franchise or in some capacity, they want that in this game. Short answer, yeah. Um, but it's not like I can walk into Walmart and say, yes, I'll take one Texas Part 3, please, and, and, and I have it. It doesn't work that way. Um, it, it's usually multiple people have to say yes. Multiple people have their hand out, meaning I have, you, know, you have to pay licensing fees for all those things. Um, and at the end of the day, you have to always figure out when you wrap all that cost in, to just acquiring it, and then you have to build it. It's like, can you make enough money to offset what it costs to do it? Um, sometimes the answer is no. But do we want to do it? Absolutely. Are there conversations happening right now? Absolutely. I think there was actually, multiple questions in this. So I want to make sure I got them all. I, you know, there, there's definitely okay. There's an angle here we should definitely address, which okay. is legacy cal- characters, like legacy Sally characters. And Pam. Yeah. So that. Our game is, you know, based, uh, it's a prequel. It's before that film took place. So it would be a bit odd to see characters from the film show up when, you know, this the game is like Groundhog Day, right? It's it's months before the first film took place, and you're replaying that, mm-hmm. that day. And so it would be weird for suddenly to see characters from the film all of a sudden show up in that, in that same time. It's not impossible, but... At some point, are, is everyone okay with like the suspension here of disbelief and just go whatever we live in a uh, post like, uh, you know, like <laughs> Spider Man metaverse now and it's like pfft, whatever, yeah. just do whatever you want. People want the content. Like, I mean, maybe, uh, but also I don't have the rights to use those characters' likenesses. I can use her name, so I can call anybody. Like I can just make a generic character and, and say that's this person or whatever. But if you want to, I wouldn't want that as a fan. I would want to look precisely like they did in the movie. So I have to track down that person, uh, and usually work with their agent, and then discuss a deal, pay the money, and then you make them. If you got to scan them, or you just making them from like portraits that you that they send in. It's a it's a longer process. It, there's a lot to it. So. I guess it also comes down to like how many people really want that. Do you really want that, or do you want more like new stuff that you haven't seen before? Or from looking at the other films in the franchise, do we want to? How how important is that? How important is Texas Two? How important is Chop Top? How important is et cetera, et cetera? Jessica Biel's character, for example, like is that weird that you see her running around in this like? Yeah, it's kind of weird too. Like the time frames are off. What do we? What's this now? So, there's a lot of creative discussion that has to go into that too. And there's also the like, what were you guys put up with? Is that not weird to you, or are you like, nah, man, it's cool, just do it. Mm-hmm. You know. So, there's still that discussion of that we're having internally and that you're having with us. And I'll say this, and I'm not trying to like be flippant or something about it, but. When the rights, when we go to rights holders and ask them and talk to them about movies, they get on social media and look at sort of like a temperature check of like, you know, what's going on there. And if if people aren't asking about that thing, they're like, Are you sure people they want to do this? Or these people seem like they're pissed off about something, or whatever the thing the case may be, is it, it's a much easier conversation to have when the, the community's saying, Man, it'd be awesome to have insert character name. 
instead of Wes, I wish you would die if you didn't put this thing in or what uh, right it's like it's a different tone uh and hollywood's they're different they're not used to game culture i guess if that makes sense anyway yeah so i think that hits everything oh there's one other bit of that uh will the game stay in the 70s time frame and you know again yeah, that's kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. kind of answered kind of thing yeah i mean kind of already answered yeah. that but are we looking at the other films yes we okay. are and would that mean we're moving out of the 70s well obviously if you are able to obtain the rights to some other right. film it would you're, you're you're jumping time there so again we're, we're, we're now in the we would be jumping into the Texas metaverse, apparently. <laughs> right, and, and you know, I think that's something that, that's important to note. Simply because I, I bring that extra bit of the question up. Simply because, you know, when we talk about authenticity, we obviously want to be authentic to the characters. We want to make sure that the world's authentic. If we were to say break that and bring in characters from a different time period, okay, so those characters are from this time period. These characters are from this time period. Yeah. So then it becomes a matter of if we do jump into, as Wes says, the Texas verse. Uh, staying authentic to those individual properties and pieces. And I think that might be what the person was asking about. Mm. Like, if you bring in different films from different time periods, how does that jive? Do you make them into 70s people? No, we stay true to what the property is that we're introducing. Right, so. right. Uh, in my experience, the current family meta is a lot of players using Cook and Hitchhiker. Shout out. So are there any plans to change this up and incentivize buffs or tweaks, for example, players to play Sissy and Johnny more? Yeah, I mean, I think we kind of touched on this a little bit with we're always, you know, sort of turning the knobs and, and looking at balance and looking at how players are playing and does this person need to be nerfed? Do they need to be buffed? Like, uh, those are constant conversations, weekly stand-up meetings all the time where we're looking and, and discussing these things. So uh, about, about, about that thing specifically, I mean, I don't know if it, it's more like holistically everyone, every family member, every victim, where do we need to make some minor adjustments? And, again, we have to do these in minor like, if you think of it as, like, a volume knob from 0 to 10, and if it's currently at a 2 and everyone says, it sucks, it's terrible, we can't crank it to a 6 because yeah. the, the, the ripple effect of that is going to break other things that you that you might not be seeing the full picture on. So we may only go from a 2 to, like, a 3 or 4 and then wait and see what that feels like. It, it's And it's crucial for us also to get that feedback when we do make those adjustments. So when you see patch notes, it's like we, you know, we adjusted this perk for something play that perk and then if you're like no it's still not good or it needs this or it needs that it allows us to okay let's go back and look at how they were playing with it how were they using it uh, did we not did, did we not explain well that they're not using it the right way or do we just yeah we just need to keep turning that knob until that feels better um yeah that'll always be a thing it's that way in every multiplayer game and that is something interesting to bring up briefly uh, when we talk about our measured approach that's exactly what Wes is elaborating on. We want to make sure that we're turning those up in increments. I know sometimes that could be frustrating because to you it seems like we'll just slam that thing and we'll be good. Um, that's obviously starts to get tricky. You start slamming those knobs one way or the other, next thing you know, things are kind of starting to go off the rails. We, we try to take a measured approach to these things and we do so for the best interest of the community. So, you know, by all means, continue talking to us about it. Play with those characters, give them a chance, try them out. Find those pain points, even if it's a little rough, and then report back to us with experience. Um, and, you know, we can work that into that measured approach and be all the better for it. This is a similar question, but on the victim's side. Seems like Sonny is the least used victim. Bummer, because he's my mm. favorite. <laughs> Seems like Sonny is the least used victim, so is there any possibility of balancing, buffing, or tweaking Sonny's base attributes? Yeah, again, it's the same yeah. sort of response there. Yeah, we're always looking at, at making those adjustments. If he needs it specifically, then... Yeah, we'll get under the hood and take a look. But uh, I think it, uh, holistically, yeah, we're always tweaking things. Yeah. And when you see that patch note line come up, make sure you give them a shot and then let us know how it went. Yep. Will Gun continue to address the rush meta where it will be toned down in pace? TCM is built like a stealth game, but many players treat it as a mix of stealth and melee-ish. Does TCM plan to try to continue to make the game more like it was intended? If you don't mind. Go ahead. Uh, you know, yes, um, TCM... Definitely is built more like a stealth game, but we've never we've maintained that we don't want to eliminate the opportunity to play differently. There should be moments of playing stealthy followed by moments of panic where you panic and you got to take off and run and do things. Um, not being stealthy should never not be possible. Not being stealthy should be a choice you make and you basically take on said risk, knowing that it's more dangerous in order mm. to get yourself out of a situation. That being said... Um, Yes, stealth should be more effective. 
I, I don't think I'm, I'm making too bold of a statement for the team here. We all see that stealth should be more effective and more impactful. Um, that way stealth is slower, safer, and more effective. Speed is more dangerous, but can be also be effective. Yep. So uh, we have some changes coming up, actually. For we this. do. Yep. I think you'll start to feel some of those uh, by the end of the month. I think yeah. you, you're, you'll start to feel some that we've been adjusting those those knobs and pulling levers. So let us know. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the big patch has some changes in it that I think people who want to play stealthy are going to really enjoy seeing. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, can Gun confirm how far ahead is the content they have planned out for this game? Can we expect a good amount of content moving forward? Yeah, I kind of addressed that already. Um, uh, yeah, we're looking at, uh, I've got a, about six to nine months um, kind of on the docket here of maps and characters and cosmetics and kills and, and whatnot. So, uh, and I, I'm just sort of reaffirm back again. Yeah, you, if you guys are still there and still playing you, and, and people still buy things, we're, we're going to keep, keep making them. Um, yeah, 100%. Next up, we got a good one. Can you confirm shirtless Johnny is in the works? Oh, here we go. Let's go. <laughs> here we go. Back to my original statement, right? Yeah. That this, these folks are, are horny. Horny. It's all right. We can say it. Yeah. I don't um, think, I don't I'll think say this. I'll either. say this <laughs> about this is people have actually came to us a, a lot with this, uh, with this comment, with this request, but they've all came to us pretty cool about it. Granted, horny. Yes. Weird. Kinda, but no one's been a jerk about it. Uh, so for that, yeah, confirmed. There's a shirtless Johnny coming. When? Eh, you have to stay tuned. The the fan base just exploded in horning. Wait, <laughs> is there any plans to reward players for staying in matches longer than? Oh, is there any plans to reward players for staying in matches longer to combat the consistent disconnects? There's an issue where victims DC and it crashes the lobby. Will this be fixed mm. soon? I mean, again, some of that you see in quality of life, the next patch that's coming, but I don't think we're really necessarily in incentivizing people to stick around. Isn't that sort of the, yeah, that, the vibe that they're asking for? Yeah. Um, no, that's not a thing we're doing. Um, but there has been some works, because some people DC for whatever, they rage quit, whatever. Uh, and I think there were some issues earlier on with the per like a, a family member was doing a kill and someone like DCs out because they don't, for whatever reason, they rage quit, the victim does. That the family member doesn't get that the XP from that that's uh, been fixed. Um, so I don't think you're ever going to be able to combat somebody just quitting because honestly, when we design the game, we design it in a way that you you can do that. Like if you've been killed and you don't want to sit there anymore, you can leave and go find another match, and there shouldn't be a penalty to that. And so transversely, you shouldn't be rewarded necessarily for for sticking around. It it, it doesn't really make much sense because you you may stick around because you like the group that you're with and or whatever, and you want to keep playing. Like cool, that's awesome, but we don't give you, we're not going to do like, oh, you get a bonus XP because you waited. Like, eh, I don't think we're, that's necessarily on the, I think we're going to be concentrating on. Yeah, and, and I think that um, another area worth mentioning is, you know, if you're talking about disconnecting and then maybe lobby getting broken or having a problem in the lobby mm -hmm. because of it and trying to curb that, I'm just going to go out and say that I think rather than trying to like piece of candy folks into sticking around, you know, we tackle the situation that's going on there. Yeah, that's causing exactly. that. Exactly. You know, we throw that on our shoulders uh, in, in my mind. You know, we're pretty straightforward folks, both at Gun and Sumo. And, and so if there's something going on there that's causing that lobby to fall apart if someone disconnects, rather than either going after the person for disconnecting or trying to, like, like I said, piece of candy them into staying, I'd rather see us, you know, solve what's going on there so that the lobby doesn't crash and then everybody can just do what the hell they want to do. Right. Um, that's kind of been our, our, our approach to those things. Mm -hmm. so. What are your thoughts on the current balance of victims versus family? Also, with the upcoming balance changes for Slaughterhouse, will the family house map also be looked into as far as balancing goes? Specifically, specifically the valve exit on family house, as it seems to be the least used exit on the family house well, map. you got some news about that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, honestly, the... We, we're always going to, we have balance changes coming to Slower House, like you said. We're moving that valve upstairs. Um, when it comes to Family House, we looked at valve escape as something that was supposed to be not the uh, easiest way out. Mm -hmm. There's a risk reward there. And I think this might shock a few of you to hear, but Family House is actually kind of the most true to design version of the valve escape because it's right there in the yard. 
you got to stand there in the yard and turn that valve. Yep. Now we've got changes coming that are going to make the valve a little operate a little differently. We've got an exploit on the family side that we're taking care of. We've got repressurizing on the family side that we're taking care of. Now I know that works kind of against this because you're talking about victims escaping from it, but uh, yeah, that's how that valve is supposed to, in our minds, function. It should be one of the most risky escapes. Hmm. Um, that being said, we're making the changes. We're bringing those valves out in, or the tanks rather, out into the kind of you know higher traffic areas on Slaughterhouse to make them more visible, which will bring them actually more in line with Family House. Yep. But we're always watching our data on our side to watch you know how hmm. our escapes going and you know Slaughterhouse. Raj, shout out to Raj for pulling and, and some of the folks at Sumo for pulling all kinds of cool telemetry that we could look at and see that, yes, okay, some things are going on with Slaughterhouse with, you know, where people are getting out. There Are they getting out of Valve? Are they getting out here there? Um, we're watching the same with Family House, and honestly, if it gets to a point where it needs to be changed, it will. But we also think that the situation with the Slaughterhouse and the Valve exit has kind of made a lot of victim players think, Valve, 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 that's the way out. Mm -hmm. So when you get to the Family House, that adjustment has to kind of happen, and we want to let things kind of settle back into a comfortable area before we go and make a snap decision on that. Right. That being said, we're watching it. And we also have all those cool changes coming for the valve to look forward to in at the end by, by the end of the month. Right. Uh, will we find out more lore about Maria Flores? <laughs> yeah. You, yes. <laughs> I you love will. the Maria Flores story. You will. So. And there's, uh, again, the museum mode that's coming. We'll have some things in there, but we're, all, we're always... Uh, you, I mean, you guys know we're, we're nerds. Like, you don't have to ask, like, are y'all going to do nerd stuff? Yeah, we're nerds. <laughs> we are. Uh, so, yeah, you can expect that. That's a good answer. Y'all going to do nerd stuff. Yeah, we're going to nerd. <laughs> Will the game ever add language translations like Portuguese, Chinese, and Russian? Yes, all three. Boom! How good is that? Mm -hmm. How great is it when we can just go, yeah, we're doing all three? Uh, they will not be in this patch by the end of the month, but they are on the docket. I don't have a time frame for you guys. Stay tuned, but they are coming. Mm -hmm. Um. If Chop Top were to be added into the game, would it be a cameo, a skin, with a new weapon, or a new family member altogether? Uh, good question. Um, if I'm putting Chop Top in the game, he's a full-on family member with full abilities, just like you know any other family member. It would not be a, a, a skin or a cameo appearance. Appearance. It would be a full, fleshed-out character. Gotta give Chop Top everything that Chop Top deserves. Hundred percent agree. Yeah. I live in Japan, and it's been so hard waiting for this game to come out on PS4. So. Are there any plans to release it in Japan on PlayStation? Yeah, um, that's been an ongoing battle. Um, I can't just call up like Sony Japan and they go, sure, and, and you're in the store. You have to work with a third party there. Um, it's just part of the culture there. And we have been through like two different companies that trying to get that, uh, to, to get a contract together, to get all the, and it's not, it's taking forever. Um, but it's a goal I have. I can't make you a promise because it's out of my control. I can't just snap a finger and say we're in Japan now. Uh, but we're working on it. Next question is, is there any possibility that weather effects like rain could be added to the maps? Um, at this time, no, because, again, it takes place at a specific day, a specific time. Um, it, 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 while it does rain in Texas, um, the time frames that we were, we were looking at when the, when the game takes place, not that it's not cloudy it's not no storms are, are rolling in it's also a pretty big cost uh to do rain because there's expectations of did the clothes get wet did the clothes dry when you go inside what about footprints did the mud puddles did they form or were they already there um do i create the like footprints in the mud what does blood do when rain hits it does it track footsteps in the house what, what can i follow those uh there's a there's a tack on effect to the request that i know it's like visually oh it's cool it like gives visual variety to the game because it's raining and storming that feels spooky and i agree with all those things it does but then there's the expectations of if you're going to do it like don't half ass it full ass it and that would take a lot uh, to pull that off when i don't think the cost and the time sink to do would have the pay have a big enough payoff that would offset it but i think there's some things that we can do to the to the maps that can still help like mess with variety and make some things more interesting that don't uh, deal with like trying to make it uh, rain or make snow rain. or whatever other you know weather effect I even heard someone say like there's tornadoes in Texas and I'm like are we are we, yeah. are we battlefield now right. like we're gonna have a tornado come through and like it rips the front of the house off now everyone can escape it's like just okay. end the match right yeah there. right right uh, let's see here 
Are there any updates for the Ping 2 Large that players in Oceana have experienced mm-hmm. since launch? Yeah. yeah so that, that's, that's been a thing we've seen since launch. We, we up the, the servers in that area, have a whole fleet there. Um, and what happens when those fill up, I think you start to connect to other regions, and that's where you're starting to see that effect happen. So we're constantly making those adjustments to that fleet in that area. If you're still feeling it today, uh, I mean, I'll sit down with Rob, uh, you know, after we get out of this, this stream and go through what's really going on in that uh, in that area. Do we not have enough? Is it offloading too fast? Is it what's going on? That Because I know we've already made the adjustments, and it, you should have felt that get a little better. Maybe it wasn't enough. So thanks for bringing it to my attention, and, you know, I'll, I'll get on that immediately and find out are we still seeing a problem there? Like, what's going What's going on? There is also a greater angle, a, a, a wider spread angle to this that I'd like to mention, and there's some, not necessarily particular to Oceana, but there's some uh, ping too large issues, kind of more widespread in, in some more other pockets. Yeah. We've made some adjustments there with uh, Pat, last patch or possibly patch prior, and we will be making some adjustments again by the end of this month. Yes. Now, as you can tell by that being two times that we've made adjustments to that, that's something that could be ongoing. It's really important that you guys use support.txchainsawgame.com to let us know, mm-hmm. you know, I'm still seeing it as frequently, not as frequently, whatever times of day that you're seeing this. Keep hitting us with that, especially, you know, during those windows following a patch when we note that we make those adjustments because that's when we can really kind of dial in and see what's going on. Uh, have you considered looking into the grappling mechanics? Plus, specifically that a second family member can execute victims mid-grapple. I actually have a great answer here. Let's hear it. We have, and it's in the Muerto Times. If you haven't seen the Muerto Times, please head to our Reddit. We have the fifth edition up now. It's the Big Patch TM trademark. There's over 250 fixes in the upcoming patch. Obviously, we can't put them all in the Times, so we put somewhere in the neighborhood of 15. But in the Muerto Times, there's a section called Under Investigation, which means those are things that aren't in the next patch, but things we're looking at. And grappling and how that entire kind of game mechanic works. Yeah. We're looking at that. And uh, hopefully we'll have more news on that for you guys soon. Possibly maybe even the patch after the next patch. But, yeah, we are absolutely looking at it. And we're absolutely looking at specifically the second family member in being able to execute immediately. Right. Could you add a steel book case or a physical special edition of the game? I would buy it in a heartbeat. First of all, uh, thanks. Yeah, thanks, first of <laughs> all, to... The other fellow nerds out there that like that kind of stuff. Uh, short answer, yeah, there's a steel book. Um, uh, this is going to sound like a cop out answer. I, I'm telling you straight up. Um, before the game came out, months before, we reached out to try to get them made, and the lead time was months and months and months, way blowing way past the launch of the game to have it done. And I reached out way ahead of time. Um, this was still sort of a post pandemic weirdness of like supply chain stuff. And it was very, very difficult to get. Also, hearing that um, during the pandemic, people were buying a lot of movies and collector edition things. Were, they were running out. They couldn't make steelbooks fast enough because people were home wanting to collect things. Um, and so still, the company Steelbook couldn't keep up with making them fast enough. And it created this lag where I reached out long, long before. And they're like, there's no way we'll hit your date. I'm like, well, it wouldn't make sense for us to drop a steel book like, you know, four or five months after the game. That's dumb. Uh, So what we're going to do is at the one year anniversary, we'll drop uh, a steel book and the artwork's already done. It looks amazing. I don't want to share it yet because that's too far out for you to like see it. But trust and believe it's it's freaking awesome. It's really good. And I work work with a very talented artist to to get it done. And everyone here, when they saw it, they were like, oh. So, yeah, it's going to be cool. Will you consider adding more diverse characters? Um, I mean, our, our character in the game, characters in the game are already pretty diverse. But, uh, you know, Ronnie, Ronnie and Kim work together on a lot of this stuff. Rob works on this stuff, too. Uh, creating new characters and things as they fit into the storyline of this. You know, everything is revolved around the Flores family. Um, and staying true to that storyline and the friends that that person uh, and that family's who they've made, who they've intermingled with, uh, that's the vision of this. We're not going to just say, oh, we're missing X person, so stick shoehorn them into the game. Um, that's not the vision of what we have for the game. It's not because we're trying to leave people out. It's just this is the story. This is what we've created with this. So 
as long as it fits into that, sure, you're going to see some diversity like that. But again, we're not just going to stick someone in because they're not included. Yeah, the, the way to do diversity correctly, in my opinion, and you know, tell me if I'm wrong, it's not about checking a box. It's more about making sure that they they fit and they make yeah, sense. Yeah, right. They're, they're fully fleshed it's a re- out. Right, real it's a real character. person that's yeah. supposed to be, yeah, right, yeah, absolutely. exactly. So will future maps have different escape methods, like something different than lock gates, fuse, and valve? Short answer, yes. Boom. Moving on. <laughs> what other elements from the OG TCM would you have liked to include but did not? The, the table scene, the family food, you know, setting at the table. Yeah, yeah. But how do you fit that into a multiplayer game? Uh, could it have been an outro? Maybe. Um, that's a, a one that I would have thought would have been cool. Uh, seeing Grandpa kill would be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just some things just don't fit. Uh, even though it, it makes sense in a linear film, it, it doesn't translate always to an open world sort of sandbox game. I'm going to tell him mine. Okay. And Wes said I was cruel for this. Maybe I am. I don't know. I think there should be a truck that comes down the road out of the family house randomly every couple of matches. <laughs> You're a victim and you escape, and the Black Maria truck comes by and just wipes you out. <laughs> and that's it. And you get no escape bonus, nothing. You, Dude, you no, were hit that's by the, brutal. Yeah, that brutality. Yeah. Dude, so you're, you're out there in no. the road dancing, and the Black Maria comes the by and just takes you out. community would destroy us if that was I a thing. I would love that. It would but. destroy us if we did that. If it was a random? Oh, oh, yeah, just completely at random. You're like, I made it. And yeah. then, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yeah. hell no. Yep. Nope. Nope. Uh, I'll direct them all to you then. If you, yeah, that is yeah, the right. <laughs> Give him my email. I'll just be like, that was Matt, Matt's idea. He's mean. Would it be possible to see Nicotero versions of other family members or more collaborations with horror legends like Greg Nicotero? Yeah, I mean, I don't think you'll see another another like Nicotero, um, you know, his approach or his name attached to something like a new character. Uh, but we're always open to do collaborations with people that we respect uh, and that we want to do make cool things with. I mean, it's how Greg and I got together was just sort of riffing off each other of things we're both passionate about and the, our work ethics and et cetera, and there was a lot of things in common. Uh, we just kind of hit it off. And, uh, yeah, I'm always open to making new friends and making cool stuff together 100%. Uh, is there any update on victims or family stuck spots? I'm going to actually touch on this one. Some of that's in quality of life. The yeah, there's a bunch in quality of life. Well, the patch coming by f- before the end of this month. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here, though, and say that outside of quality of life, there's probably a bunch more, and they're going to get reported to us, and we're going to have to get oh, yeah. them in quality of life, too. And then there will be a bunch. It's This is a constant whack-a-mole it's a cycle. thing. Yep. Now, one thing I will say is all of the modern consoles, and of course on PC, can grab screenshots. The best thing you can do if you get stuck in a spot is before you exit the match, shut the console off, whatever the case is, grab that screenshot, send it over to support.txchainsawgame.com because that's one of those situations where we need every one of those screenshots. We need them to come through. Our support team, Mel, Raj, folks like that, will will get that all sent over to the team and we'll continue you know whacking the moles as they come up. But I mean it's how we it's how we reproduce bugs is is when you say if you just verbally were like, oh I was behind the the slaughterhouse and I, yeah. you know, stepped next to this thing and I fell through the earth or whatever crazy thing happened. We're like, yeah, but where? Because for us to go try to find that singular spot and it could have been tied to something else. Was it, is it just one character can do that or can anyone fall through it? Did you have to be doing something? Was you in a state change? Were you putting a health kit on and then suddenly you fell through? So having as much of that detail work is how we then reproduce. You, we cannot fix a bug that's not reproducible because it's the only way we can fix it is we reproduce it and you see in the code where shit went sideways, and you're like, oh, here we go. Otherwise, it's needle in a haystack. Uh, so it's not I, – I see a lot of people say when we, we, we say, hey, go to the, the sport and give us this thing, they're like – they have this mentality of, like, I'm not doing your job for you. And you're like, no, 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 it's not It's not we're asking you to do our job. It's like we, we can't, like, do this mm-hmm. without having some of this data in front of us. Otherwise, we're feeling around in the dark trying to find that. That's wasting time, and there's – there's 50 other bugs in front of this that need to get fixed. And now we've spent two days trying to find this one thing when, man, if we'd have had a couple screenshots of, like, the angle, where they were, who they were, what were they wearing, what were they, if we can knock out all those variables, it makes the bug fix way faster. Uh, let's see. What was the inspiration for creating this game? Well, the 1974 film. 
And has it lived up to your expectations? If you could, would you go back in time and change anything about the game in the early stages of development? Oof. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's based on the 74 film. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I mean, any anyone that works in the game industry, if they're in the designs out of that, yeah, they would always want to go back in time and be like, oh, I wish I could have, maybe you could have fought for this one thing you wanted mm -hmm. really badly, or I wish we could have had, you know, more money to get this thing in or more time to do this thing or um, not let that, not let that one thing sort of slip where you may say, oh, we'll get to that, we'll get to that, we'll get to that, and then you don't. Uh, and you have to end up going, hey, we just got to cut it because there's no time left anymore. And you're like, oh, I should have fought for that. So, yeah, there's a, all, there's a lot of that. Um, it also becomes a bit of a slippery slope when you talk about it because giving you the examples of those things, it, it can also make people go, oh, man, that should have happened. And then that turns into a different conversation of like, oh, that was the stuff they had to do and they, did, and they didn't get it in the game. Oh, they, they half-assed the game or wherever weird sort of way that people can twist words, it can become that if you start to go down that road. And it's also a bit painful for the people who went through it because uh, it's stuff we felt and fought and wanted really bad in the game and it still had to, you know, didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. You had to shelve it, you had to cut it, you had to do whatever. Uh, and it hurts, dude. It, it like genuinely hurts to uh, go back down that road again, like memory road and think about what, you know, what you wish you could have got in there kind of a thing. So, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not usually... Uh, a topic m most devs really want to dive deep on for the reasons I just sort of got into. That You think I answered that right? Yeah, I feel so. Okay. This is a good one. What capacity are Matt and Wes on the team of the TCM game? I feel like it's pointless asking them questions since it's kind of above their pay grade. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Um, yeah, as the CEO and studio head and sole founder of Gun, I can totally understand why... <laughs> <laughs> you might think it's above above my pay grade because uh, there are um, sh multiple people above me at Gun, um, so I can understand why you may why you might think that. And of course, Matt, coming from the pedigree of being at uh, you know Ubisoft for many years and working on some of the biggest games in the world, uh, and coming in and senior handedly helping to right the ship when it came to the lack of of. Uh, we were we were sort of rudderless a little bit in in the community side and 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 building that and ma managing that properly and um, yeah and, and his flexibility and, and skill set to move right into like working on metagame and and discussing in depth on perks and how they should work and because uh, he saw a lot of that through a lot of the games he worked from Division to uh, Wildlands etc uh, over at, at Ubisoft so there's a lot of of, uh, of a great wealth of knowledge there that helps us push push games forward but uh sure go ahead and say we don't know what we're talking about or it's above our pay grade um i would argue that person i don't know that's that's a silly question to ask when yeah. i'm sure the, the last thing you made was your bed <laughs> like let's keep it real i i personally i appreciate everybody who actually asked the question so uh, it's kind of funny to say it's pointless asking questions while asking a question, wasting your <laughs> yeah. opportunity to ask a question. Right, right. But uh, thanks, bud. You got your moment. There will there will there ever be additional attributes or perks added to the game and characters? Well, I mean, we've already covered characters, definitely. Yep. Attributes, um, those are kind of finite and locked. And and the reason, if you guys don't mind me, if you don't mind sure. me running with this, um, when you and and Rob, I'm kind of speaking to what you do, you know. But when you build out these characters, you say, okay, well, what are the parameters? that we're gonna tinker with with them about a person, like toughness, stamina, things mm -hmm. like that. And once you set those parameters, they have to maintain across the board for all the, the different characters so that those become now the scales that you kind of weigh those characters on, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, so as far as attributes, they're gonna stay the same. Abilities come with each character. I know we have a lot of A names, capital A names in here. So in case you're referring to abilities, those come with each new character. Each new character will have a star sign ability unique to them. Their attributes, though, however, are locked. Uh, and then the last bit is perks. We definitely plan to look at adding and potentially removing perks. We also know that, you, and, and if you've played the game, you know that a lot of the family have unique perks. So new family members, you don't know. They might have unique perks that are unique to their family ability. You'll have to keep an eye out for that. And shouts out to Rob. Rob, throw the camera to yourself. Just want to say, as someone who worked on these the characters... 
and balance them, came up with what they can, like their abilities that they can do, their speed, their pacing in between, and the fact that you're producing this show. Yeah. The multi-talent, I just want to say, bro, there's so many people above your pay grade. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, oh, are there are issues with the game's party system and party disbandment still being looked into, and when can we expect a fix? I actually have an answer for yeah, this go ahead. as well. Uh, this is actually marked as needs more info. We have made some changes and, and fixed a few things with parties, um, but I can say this. Our support team desperately needs more info on this. If this is happening, happening to you and happening to you regularly, please reach out and get in touch with our support team and start a dialogue so they can get that information that they need. I know it's been in a couple of different Muerto times where it's been, you know, needs more info, needs more info, needs more info, but mm -hmm. we're not getting that uptick that we need in order to really kind of, you know, hone in on it. Yep. Uh, have you guys thought about starting a content creator program for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I don't know, man. Have you? Uh, yeah, absolutely have. You know, uh, here's the thing with these programs. I think they're great. I think they're awesome. Um, and I... I wouldn't do one though. I wouldn't want to do one if we couldn't give it the kind of time and attention that it needs. Yeah. And right now we've been hair on hair on fire a bit. You know, it's fair to say. What are you trying to say? Yeah. Right. Well, those of us who have the hair to light on fire, it's been on fire. And um, you know, we we've been trying to tackle things that, and we made it clear to folks we want to make sure that, you know, if we're going to get content out, we're going to get it out after a series of fixes. Yeah. We went through our rapid page, uh, rapid patch phase. Now we're going into our longer patch kind of cycle uh we want to do those things so yeah now that we can catch our breath a little more right yeah right you wouldn't want to start a content creator program and not have all of your your i's dotted and your t's crossed yeah. because that's a disservice to those creators so that being said yes we absolutely want to we think they're great and you're gonna we'll workshop to some them. names of what you call them yeah, what yeah about little nugs little nugs yeah but, oh lil l-i-l -L, like yeah lil yeah. nugs yeah. Or like, yeah, there's something there with Nugget. Maybe maybe something there with Farms. I don't know. We're going to have to see. Mm. I'm not putting anything out off of the top of my head because, uh, you know, it might get silly in here. Okay. But yeah. now... We'll, we'll workshop it. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll need, to, we'll need to put the rock back in the tumbler. But we do have a couple of Twitch Live questions that we wanted to get to. We are definitely hurting for time since we're 42 minutes. Yeah, we're minutes. over. Yeah, we're over. We're 42 minutes past when we were going to end this, but we're going to hang out because we don't want anybody here thinking that Oh, they just ignored chat. So we're going to hit a couple of these lot questions that had come through chat previously. I do want to point out, I've killed just about this whole water. Bro, I, I did about 32 Bath hours. Bathroom, bathroom break. <laughs> uh, here. So, yeah. uh, can we buy Nugget, please? And will you please pet Nugget for us? Uh, nuggets are not for sale. First off, we're going to get no. a butt in here. The Nuggets are not for sale. Um, as a matter of fact, Wes, I'll let you explain how yeah. Nugget came to be. Well, this was a... A joint venture with Microsoft. So when we were throwing our party, <laughs> nice. When we were throwing our party, we uh, uh, reached out to Microsoft and we're trying to find some unique ways to um, give some something to someone when they leave the party. And uh, we sent them over a bunch of assets of things that are in the game. And we jokingly were like, "Oh yeah, and there's a chicken in a cage." And they were like, "We love it. We're we're gonna make that." And we we're like, "Really?" And so they not only made the the nugget you see here, but they also had uh, a, a animatronic nugget that was in a cage and when you walk past it it squawks and, and flaps its wings and stuff it was it was amazing um so that's where that came from and we had a bunch left over from the party because they, they they sent us far more than what the total attendees that we told them they, they just made more so we had a bunch of them left over so we've been sending them out to you know a few friends here and there um some streamers and whatnot but most of most of it all just kind of stayed here internally i know that we've got some some cons in the future we'll be going to uh, we sent some to some of the talent that's associated with the game. We sent them several they could give out, uh, you know, that, that type of thing. But trying to find someone that, who can make that same one at a cost that doesn't make you want to pass out, I couldn't figure out how to do. Because I went back to the original people who made that, and they're like, they're expensive, man. And I'm like, what are we talking here? And they're like, hard costs, like nearly 50 each. And I'm like, so... How much am I? I, I I'm not going to sell a chicken mm -hmm. for you know sixty or seventy dollars just to have a healthy profit margin on the product because I have to pay for it to even be setting in the store. So it's like, at what point is this feel like I'm ripping people off by selling them a seventy dollar chicken? That's ridiculous. So I kept ta you know trying to get them to find a ways to reduce the cost. And of course we could go smaller, I guess, which might help cut down. But even still, it's it's a different world. Uh, comparatively to pre-pandemic about getting stuff like this made from a shirt to whatever. Everything is like 40 to 50% more expensive. You see it at the grocery store. It's the same thing when we're trying to get 
you know, cool merch and stuff made us everything cost way too too too, too much. Uh, and I don't feel right sticking that in a store and charging you 70 bucks for a chicken. But it's not a completely no. We're still trying to figure out a way that we can like, get costs down to get it to where we can if the people want them. But for right now, we have what we have, and they're promotional only. Yeah, and uh, I will say this, though, which Wes kind of hit, but I want to reiterate. You, if you see that gun is going to be at any kind of convention or show in your area, stop by because we pretty much always bring a couple nuggets. We do. We'll raffle them off or give and them posters. away. Or, yep. And posters and all kinds of cool stuff, but yeah. Uh, also, keep an eye on social. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a nugget giveaway. Um, community team and myself, we, we put together a couple of those nugget giveaways already. Uh, I want to say like threads and Instagram. Maybe we'll run another one soon. We do still have some from the oh, original yeah. skid. Will you ever have emotes? That's a tough one. Um, I mean, there's some discussion about emotes that can help with gameplay, but not like dancing and stuff. Uh, it doesn't fit the world of Texas. Um, you're not going to see the equivalent of like, you know, Chad Speedo from Friday the 13th doing a dance over Jason. Like you're not you're not going to see that in Texas. It doesn't it doesn't match the the theme and the tone of the of the game. But there is discussion about some ways that can you use emotes in case you're not using a microphone, for example. So there's some discussions around that, but I'm not going to make any promises yet because, again, it's right now it's literal discussions is where we're at. Will the game ever have proximity chat? No. Um, no. Uh, we, we, we had it on Friday, and it, and it fit for that, but um, it, it, it wasn't something we wanted to do. No, we thought we needed to do. Uh, for this game, we we like the sort of team feel of um, who can hear who and and why and uh, yeah. We also saw some, uh, you know, if the if the in Friday we saw some toxic behavior with you know Jason being able to talk to and so on and so forth. Like there was, but again, it, the the tone of that game it sort of fits where Texas is uh, a bit more serious, a bit more brutal. Um, it it just doesn't quite fit the tone of it. Yeah, you know, there's also a bit to, to that, which I know there's hurdles to get around. You could get around these things, but, you know, a game based on stealth, and then you can, you're betrayed by stealth. You know, mm. your buddy walks in the room and goes, where are you playing? And they're yeah. like, oh, well, he's over there. You know, those yeah. kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, uh, will you make a, oh, how are you preparing for additional lobby dodging once new characters are released? If you don't mind, I can jump into sure. this one. You know, any game with single pick characters is going to deal with that. Um, th to an extent, you're going to have folks who, they want to play that character. They don't get in. They, they drop out of the lobby. I think that there's a lot of things that we've discussed internally of, like, creative solutions to how we might be able to handle something like that, but none of those are quite out of the, the, the seed moment yet in order to share here. Um, in terms of when the new characters are released, uh, you know, this is something that we're going to take the time to do right. We're not going to try and accelerate some kind of a change because of a perceived issue that when they drop with lobby dodging. So I'd much rather, and, and the team would much rather, that we tackle this in, in, in a more measured and, and, and kind of calculated way. Those conversations are starting, but by the same note, um, yeah, we don't have anything to share on that at this time. Um, honestly, single pick games, you're going to have issues when you mm. run out new characters. That's kind of that's a thing that's going to happen. The most I can say is I, I think it's a good opportunity for folks to make sure that they're going back also through their catalogs. You get a chance to be one of those new characters, cool. If you don't, you know, I'm sure there's a few characters you're still working on to, to max out completely. I'm starting to get tight on time, sorry. We may only yeah, have yeah. time for one or two more. Uh, well, let's go. Uh, will you make a mobile port or Steam Deck? Mobile port, no. Steam Deck, mm, um, keep an eye out. Yeah. Are you looking into family players blocking the doorway of the fuse exit? I mean, that is kind of a strategy, I have to say. Mm. You know, if you're a big guy and somebody's trying to run out a door, you might stand in front of a door. Uh, that being said, we're monitoring as we always do. How are the improvements to your anti-cheat tools going? Again, whack-a-mole. That's similar to stuck spots in the respect yep. that. Yep. That's work that's never done. Um, it's something that we're going to have to continue working on. As far as the pause, the whole bringing PC out of crossplay, that was more to bring us to a, mo a point where we would be in a better position to do that ongoing work. So that's why that was necessary. That's why PC's back in the crossplay pool now, and that's why we're going to continue in a maintenance mode to make sure that we're keeping up with those anti-cheat tools. Is there anything going to be done with the volume of Nick Terra Leatherface? Because it sounds lowered compared to default Leatherface. It was already, yeah, it was boosted. Um, I thought we just boosted it in the most recent. I thought so as well, and if we didn't, I know we have something coming for that. In quality of life, yeah. yeah. 
So I, I think it already happened. And if it's still, if there still need to be adjustments, I think Ross may have actually caught something that maybe goes into the next quality of life uh, patch anyway, which happens at the end of the month. Are you planning to make these types of streams more often in the future? Absolutely. Beyond and Tales from the Stream will be back. Yep. So, and we'll be hanging out here telling you guys stories on Tales, doing patch notes on Beyond, you know, on and on. We also can, you know, do more Q&A in Beyond. Not always sure. a two-hour one, but yeah. yeah. Will there be the ability to choose to play cross-play between either only the console's PC when you want to play with? That's something to stay tuned on. A more bespoke toggle for what type of oh, cross-play right. you want. Yes. Yep. It's something we're investigating and looking into, and hopefully we'll have an answer for you on that soon. There we go. We nailed them. Uh, that was a lot of questions. Yeah, it was. It was 60-something. 60, 60. And each one of those had numerous questions within it, because Andy, shout out to Andy and Sid, shout out to Sid. Yes. They condensed from Reddit into one, so they were... Like 400 and change down to, yeah. yeah. Great job. Awesome. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. And thanks for taking the time to ask questions. Like, yeah, yeah. This is, this is, we need to do more of these, where if you guys have questions, you ask me, we answer them. If we can't answer them, we'll answer them. Um, but there's also some things that, you know, should be left for surprise because surprises are fun. And that's what, you know, is we, we should be all right with that. You should be okay with having some things you don't know and they just come out. But uh, it's good for us to have this sort of little town hall type meeting where you guys came to us with your concerns and your questions and we're taking the time to answer them. And thanks for, for hanging out for this long because, like you said, it's been about two hours. So, mm -hmm. so thank you for your patience and uh, we'll see you on the, on the next one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, echoing everything Wes said. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Keep coming at us on Reddit. Keep coming at us with questions, and the team's going to keep doing everything they can to answer. We appreciate you. Have a good night. Have a good weekend. See ya.